Spin. Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica and our continuing series on the Apple Bandai Pippin, which we've been putting out episodes sporadically on. And today we're taking a look at Victorian Park, a really strange but yet somehow intriguing point and click adventure game that takes place in a theme park and has some very kind of fairy tale elements to it. And taking a look at the intro here, it does look quite nice for its time and place. It was released in 1996 for the Pippin and Macintosh computers, and there was a Windows port as well. But I do like the intro, it kind of sets the tone and gives you a little bit of a vibe of what's going on in the game. Even though this game is 100% in Japanese and it becomes very difficult to really make too much progress, the visuals, the soundtrack, everything go together really well to make me wonder what is going on in this game and it makes me kind of want to finish it. Because I grew up in a time and era where these sort of mist-like games were very popular, so I do enjoy checking out things that I've never seen before and Victorian Park is definitely one of them. But as far as like how the game actually works, you know, it's a standard mist formula, except you have animation between each different movement. So as opposed to just loading another static image, it plays the little movie sequences in between each jump. And there's parts of the park that you can't access immediately. And it does kind of act a little bit like a maze because there are some secret passages and other things in the game that you need to find and uncover. But I just love the strange world that this game inhabits. It's got that really weird kind of like David Lynch style of character where nothing really seems to make much sense. It looks and feels real, but at the same time, it hits that uncanny territory where what you're seeing is just incongruent with what your brain's telling you it should be. And maybe that's a little bit too esoteric even for me. But you'll see here, we're going to take a little turn and we're going to talk to a character and it is a cow in a turtle shell. Now, I don't really know what's going on with that. I mean, I'm guessing it's a cow, but of course, everything's in Japanese. So I don't know if he's even telling me what he is, but it's just really weird and really quirky. And since there's not a ton to check out on the Pippin, I was actually pleasantly surprised. But it does have a decent amount of good point-and-click adventure puzzle style games. And even if I can't really understand the main goal of what I'm supposed to be doing in Victorian Park, and there is no walkthrough online so I can't look it up and make further progress, hunting around and poking at the game is an enjoyable enough experience. And I'm going to answer no here, even though I don't know what I'm answering to. Or maybe I pick yes. I can't remember. It's been a month since I played this. It was a yes. It's just intriguing enough to want to keep looking at it and it looks really nice at least to my eye now why did the designers choose to make a cow turtle i have no idea but that's what's fun about the game is you want to continually progress and see what weird and strange character you're going to meet next i will say the loading times can be a little bit long on the console but as far as the navigation and the control is concerned it is great having that trackball in the middle of the pippin controller because it makes navigating these type of games perfectly logical just like if you're using a computer, because obviously when you're using the Pippin, you are just using a Macintosh computer in a fun box. And I don't exactly know what the type point of the betting is here. I've never actually won. Maybe you can't win unless you get some item because you do have an inventory. But there's these little interactive bits here that you can check out. More so than in a game like Myst or those other point and click adventure games where you're just kind of following the story along. This game does give you little side bits of things to do just to see what else is going on in the world. Although I don't know how you actually interact with these characters here. You have a rabbit running around with a tea set. Definitely seems like it's coming out of Alice in Wonderland because this game is heavily influenced, obviously, by different classical fairy tales. And the rabbit seems to go into the shop here, but when we walk in, we have this very strange looking woman. Again, kind of looks like the Mad Queen from Alice in Wonderland, but I don't speak Japanese, so I really don't know what she's saying. But I do like all that different inspiration because I do love those classic fairy tales growing up as a kid, you know, seeing the movies, reading the books, and I do like that they've used that in the storyline. Now, I really do wish that I knew what was going on in the game. That is the one unfortunate part of this just being exclusively in Japanese. Some of the text I can translate with Google Translate, but of course, the audio, there's nothing I can do about that. So you're never really going to get the main story. But if you are looking for something new to play on your Pippin, if you have one, or if you really like point and click adventure games, especially rare ones, Victorian Park is definitely something fun to check out. And now we're just going to move on to a little bit different area of the game. And there's different things that you can collect. And some of them, you items you give to other people. But basically, from what I understand, is you're trying to find your lost brother in this park. And you have these different coins. You can find them in different places and pick them up. But we see this little Dracula box here. And if we go into our inventory and grab a Victorian Park coin and pop it in the machine, we're then able to use this. 
Do I know exactly if it's a puzzle, what I'm trying to solve here? I really don't know. We have a bat, we have garlic, we have a woman, a candlestick, a coffin, all those classic Dracula tropes, even the cross, but I don't exactly know what the intent of viewing that is. I think it's a puzzle, but like I said, it's really difficult to gather that because the language is completely Japanese and there's just a little bit of confusion. And you can watch this little movie here of a ship battle. This is another thing that the game has. Maybe it's important to the story. Maybe it's just there for complete fun. But now we're going to a completely different area of the game. What I'm going to do is just let you watch and listen a little bit because the main theme of Victorian Park is just absolutely addicting. It'll get stuck in your head. But I will come back in just a little bit after this cutscene and we'll talk more about the game and I'll close the video out. But if you're looking for a new point and click adventure game you've never played before, it is on Windows, it is on Mac, and I definitely recommend it. But listen a little bit and I will be back in just a second. もう遅いから、きっとお嬢ちゃんが最後のお客だよ。ところで、お嬢ちゃんは宝島を読んだことがあるかな。なかなかの独特な冒険なんだよ。So in the game you're going to find these different books and they act as portals to other areas in the game. And you can't access those areas without finding a book. As far as I can tell, there is no other entrance to these particular places. Well, we go through this fairy tale book, and now all of a sudden we're in this ornate dining room, and in our inventory we have the Ace of Diamonds. What do we do with that? I haven't 100% figured that out quite yet. And it does have that classic feeling of an adventure game, where some of the puzzles that I have solved, the solutions are really strange and don't really make much sense, but that's just kind of how adventure games always have been, especially back then. They usually don't make much sense. But trying to solve them, you know, doing some trial and error exercises in there, it kind of makes it feel like it's a fun thing. Even if you don't really know what you're doing or why you're doing it, you are still making forward momentum. And you'll see on this table we have another book. And you're going to find these all throughout the game. And I'm pretty sure that in each area there's something that you need to solve with the inventory items you're given when you go through those portals that are going to allow you to advance the game and the story. But I would say the world that Victorian Park inhabits is quite large. And now you have a guy mopping and he's wearing the bucket on his foot. I don't get it. He kind of looks like Leland Palmer a little bit from Twin Peaks, but maybe I'm just imparting that strange vibe into my own head. But the world that they built with this game is quite awesome. It really is intriguing, and I wish we got more games with these really weird scenarios and storylines that just don't make sense, because I love that kind of vibe in a game where you don't feel quite comfortable and you don't really know what's going on. I feel like that was something that was really prevalent in the 90s with these sort of adventure games. Weirdness was king in a lot of them, and we don't see that as much. And now you'll see we have another book that's going to transport us to another place. And trying to map out all the different paths and ways that you can go to get back to places, to go to new places, is quite interesting. Because, like I said, the map in this game, the area you're in, is huge. And we found three more coins, and you do need to be on the lookout for these in the game, because they're just sitting on items. And as you get them, you're able to do more things within the game. Because now we have a chest here, but we don't have a key or a way to open it, so we're going to have to find out where that comes from. And that's your classic adventure game. But I think the visuals, the 3D models, all the animations that transition between one stage to another look quite good. Because now we're going through this large underground area with these skeletons holding swords, and it creates a really good vibe before we get to the pirate ship here. Each area is unique, it has something going on, the characters are fun, the music's charming. It just is a game that I've never really experienced before. When I was looking for more things to play on my prototype Apple Pippin, I saw this and I was instantaneously intrigued by seeing the screenshots. And trust me, the Pippin library is not that deep, so finding anything that you're interested in is a bit of a challenge because there's not that many games for the system in general, and then when you're actually looking for good games, there's even less. We popped up from the sewer there, and that's what I mean about this game having a lot of different hidden paths. And then for some strange and random reason, we can take a Ferris wheel ride throughout Victorian Park and see it from the sky. But that's the game. 
Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you could do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, and subscribe, and ring that notification bell. It takes a lot of time and energy to make each one of these episodes. We definitely appreciate your support. We will have a few more things on the Pippin. They haven't been the most popular videos, but I've captured this, so I want to talk about it. If you've ever played the game, leave me a comment below or tell me what you guys think. Otherwise, we'll be back on Sunday and Tuesday with more episodes, but we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.